Good morning, everybody. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Joseph Redford. I'm 36 years old. Uh, I grew up in a small town in the southeast of England, the oldest of three uh, children, and uh, was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome and dyspraxia. And I suspect I may have ADHD as well. Um, welcome everybody to the 2020 Autistic Pride Online celebration. Uh, I think since the coronavirus outbreak came along and uh, disrupted everything, uh, I think uh, a lot of us have uh, been finding ways to continue on with Autistic Pride this year. Um, most people who've had a slot in this year's Autistic Pride have organised a physical picnic or uh, an event in previous years. And um, so this is sort of a way to try and, uh, I, I see, to try and recreate uh, these things, but online. Uh, so um, I, I, I organise an annual picnic in Hyde Park uh, every every year um, since 2015. Um, so I'm going to try and, for this slot, I'm going to try and um, do what, uh, what, uh, what has, um, do, do an equivalent of what, have happened in uh, in um in 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 Hyde Park. I sort of, I'll be talking for a bit. Uh, then I've messages from other people um uh, talking about uh about things uh, that have affected them in in uh, previous years. So um so um so yeah. So uh so it'll be me talking until ten thirty. And then we'll have a speech from Sarah McCulloch of uh, the Autistic Empire, who um, an organisation I'm part of, who who's co-organised Autistic Pride um, uh, earlier uh, last year. I uh, have a poem from. We'll have two poems from Natalie Joel, uh, and we'll have a message uh, from messages from Paul Wady and Charlie Fien. Um, I should point out that. Uh, I'm not a natural speaker. I too tend to mumble when I talk and sometimes can be inaudible. Uh, I'll try to be clear so people can hear me, but I don't apologize if I mumble uh, uh, or if it's not as polished because this is my authentic way of communicating. And well, I see it, being true to yourself is part of what autistic pride is all about. Um, so the way I see it is, Pride as a concept applied to marginalised groups uh, first originated from the uh, Black Power and Black Pride movement that sprung up in the wake of the, wake of the civil rights movement in early 1960s America. After the Stonewall riots in 1969, uh, gay pride became a concept. Both movements were reactions to dominant cultures at the time and saw, which saw kind of Black and LGBT people as subalterns rather than full citizens and human beings. His role in life was to either keep their heads down or assimilate into wider culture. Both uh, both pride movements asserted the right to be consciousness, conscious of your own dignity, uh, rather, and rather than look to wider society and the dominant uh, sort of culture around them to base, base their identity on, both movements looked to other sources of validation African culture in the case of Black Pride uh, and other liberation movements in the case of LGBT Pride, but uh, they also look to each other, uh, other Black and LGBT people to base their identities on and look upon each other in order to uplift themselves. Instead of assimilating and keeping your head down, both movements publicly asserted the right to be different and emphasise this difference through dress, actions and many other ways. Um, the way I see it, um, in other ways, um, Autistic pride is intended to publicly challenge the prevailing view that autism is disease or deviance to be cured or something to be ashamed of and that enables us to cast aside the shame that many of, of us feel throughout the year and let the freak flag fly. Uh, over the decades, other marginalised groups have applied the concept of pride to themselves. Uh, disability pride came about in 1990 and psychiatric survivors pride, which later evolved into mad pride, it originated in Canada in 1993, which aimed, like previous movements, to increase visibility and challenge the dominant narrative. Mad Pride is probably the most direct precursor to Autistic Pride, as the initial aims uh, of the movement were to reclaim the identity of being mad from a negative one to a positive one. 
and also reclaim terms such as mad, nutter, or psycho to from pejorative to positive words. Ron Mad Pride Day was officially on September the 18th. Uh, events have been held in around some months worldwide. Um, uh, I apologize to uh, Gwen if I've completely got, <laughs> got the origins wrong. Uh, um, when I was diagnosed with Asperger's at 11, um, I sort of, I sort of had, sort of accepted that I was weird and different beforehand. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and didn't sort of see it as a problem. But after I was diagnosed, um, then, um, then a, a lot of, a lot of traits, which I saw as like basically okay, but different. Like I think I these sort of like, you know, it's all skip up and down. It's all very, it's all different way and sort of memorize unusual facts or sort of stimmed with, uh, with my hands. A lot, a lot of these things were sort of redefining sort of quite pathological language. Um, and so they're sort of, they're sort of treated as sort of symptoms of a, of a disease almost. And it was sort of you know, telegraphed to me in, in a way that, um, that, that I had to, that I had to, that to my, my role in life was to try and overcome this and be as close to being as normal as possible. Um, and, 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 and I had things like told like, oh no, he only has a brush of Asperger sort of, or favorably compared to other people who were, who were more autistic. And, and that, that led to, that, that led to sort of, that did really sort of mess me up quite a lot <laughs> in my, in my, uh, later teens and, uh, and uh, it did cause it caused a lot of lot of, lot of problems. Um, He's quite nervous as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> so uh, sorry about that. Um. So, um, so, um, I first came across, um, so, um, and when sort of looking around for, for other autistics, um, sort of other autistic perspectives, um, uh, in the late 1990s, there wasn't much out there, um, like as usual, uh, as, 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 as much as usual, Q would be rubbish that was about, I found a lot of, uh, self had because tend to emphasize how much they suffer because of the condition and needed more support because of this. And uh, which, we, which I mean, these, these are sort of legitimate uh, issues to face, but I sort of found it off putting because I wanted to read something positive. Um, so sort of later on uh, in my early 20s, uh, I sort of kind of sort of saw myself as different. Uh, uh, Saw myself different and had sort of partially accepted my autistic nature. Uh, why did it embrace some aspects of my autism? For example, I was proud of my ability to my, my memory, my attention to detail, uh, work ethic, strong system, personal ethics, and ability to think for myself and not get swayed by groupthink, my ability to spot patterns and organize. Uh, if someone asked me if I was proud to be autistic then, I'd have said yes, but in reality, I was more proud of doing things that people said I couldn't do. Uh, there were still parts of myself I was ashamed of and wanted to hide and suppress. Uh, I was still ashamed that I wasn't as verbally fluent as others, and that I struggled with speech and handwriting, could be quite emotionally sensitive at times. Um, uh, that had unusual facial expressions or body postures, uh, could get overwhelmed by social interaction. And, uh, and I tried to hide from the fact that these were part of what I am, and they shaped me just as much as my strengths. I was trying to succeed and get in life, ahead in life, in spite of my autism, in spite, and I was still trying to force myself to live up to a mainstream conception of the rebellious eccentric that one wasn't necessarily who I was. Um, I first came across in auti Autistic Pride in uh, around 2007, um, and uh, 
and was immediately inspired by the concept uh, and the strap line acceptance, not cure. Um, and uh, well, and coming across autistic pride meant a lot to me on various levels, not only not only sort of the fact that you know you could be proud, publicly proud of being being autistic, but uh, the fact that it sort of some unashamedly demands acceptance from wider society. But on another level, I feel it calls on autistic people to accept ourselves and everything about us. Uh, the way I see it, autistic pride doesn't need to be brash or showing off to the world. Uh, just living your life with an internal voice, just saying you, know, you are valid and, and you're fine the way you are. I um, also found it interesting that, um, and, uh, and correct me later if I'm wrong, um, but uh, I believe in 2006, Amy Nelson led a group of people into Hyde Park on Autistic Pride Day uh, and, high, in 2000 and, and had a picnic there. And I saw this as quite a symbolic gesture and, uh, and want to sort of emulate this because uh, Hyde Park had been like a center of public life for hundreds of years. Many radical movements originated there. So it would be a rather appropriate place. It's all, sort of political element of it uh and also because it was in a park um people celebrating autistic pride weren't cut off from the rest of society uh we were sort of out there in society um sort of publicly and openly asserting ourselves not hiding away physically or hiding away ourselves from society or each other um i think the biggest factor that pushed me from supporting autistic pride into organizing an event myself was uh, when I first went to Autoscape in 2014. This was nothing less than a life-changing experience. Uh, for the first time in my life, I was in a physical space where autistic people were in the majority and weren't supervised by non-autistic people. Uh, it felt great being amongst a group of people with mannerisms, reactions, and life experiences that were similar to my own. For the previous, um, the previous 20 years prior to Autoscape in 2014, I was diagnosed in 1995, and uh, uh, I interacted with about three other autistic people. So it was it was great seeing that. Uh, it's great seeing things that are sort of unique to me, sort of reflected in in other people. Uh, and I went away from it feeling a sense of belonging and relaxation that I'd rarely felt before, and wanted to replicate this experience as much as possible through interacting with others in the community. Um, as I got through a phase in my life uh, where I'd organized a series of obstacles which I thought were insurmountable, um, I decided to go ahead and organize um, cystic pride picnics in uh, in Hyde Park. Um, uh, it's been done so every year since uh, 2015. Uh, we won't have a very tiny picnic in Hyde Park uh, on June the 14th, but because of the demonstrations and riots um, and the ongoing coronavirus, uh, uh, that may be that may happen again on August the fifteenth, but it may not happen at all. And um, thanks to the efforts, uh, simultaneous efforts of uh, Rachel Cotton in Reading and uh, KB Brook in Inverness and many others, Autistic Pride has been brought to the attention of many more people. And uh, although or I, the first event I ran in twenty fifteen was hastily organised. It was a huge success, uh, around 20 people turned up and while most people just relaxed and controlled themselves in this newly created autistic space, uh, some others spoke at Speaker's Corner and uh, others entertained the group with speeches and songs. Being there, I got the same feeling that I did in Allscape in 2014. Although it's been incredibly stressful to organize these events, there have been many highlights for me, including uh, watching autistic people go to speaker's corner, a loud, intimidating environment, but yet overcome this and still speak about autistic pride and still sort of assert ourselves in public. Um, also having passers-by who are autistic ourselves notice us, become aware of a larger autistic community. Uh, I've, I've come across several instances of people who've never spoken to another autistic person before uh, and, and never realised a community exists. Uh, other people who aren't autistic approach us, but acknowledge that this is our space and are deferential, respectful to our ways of being, which is a big difference uh, to what many of us face in uh, real life. And often we sort of expect hostility from members of the public, but it never materialise. 
rises and often we expect lots of internal friction and conflicts but i found like the events that of organized tend to be quite very peaceful self-regulating and naturally fairly inclusive without being direct to um uh and over the past five years organized autistic prides events i've seen people sort of gain the confidence to open up and see people visibly relax and settle into this newly created autistic space um since 2018 um uh, autistic pride uh, events have grown rapidly in the uk um there are now, now over a dozen autistic pride events in the uk uh, these can range uh, from large festivals um, to small picnics involving a dozen people. Uh, Autism Rights Group Highland managed to fly the Autistic Pride flag outside the Scottish Government House on Autistic Pride Day uh, every day since 2018. And after the NAS and Ambitious About Autism tried to co-opt Autistic Pride in previous years, a group of organisers clubbed together to form the Autistic Pride Alliance um, in order to assure that Autistic Pride events remain something that is run and organised by the autistic people and to swap information and help each other organise events. Um, and I like how, how it's, it's set itself up actually because um, like every, every single like um, every single Autistic Pride event is, um, uh, is, is run by like, separate, separate groups um, but we kind of you know, if we need to do something collectively, um, normally it's uh, normally it's writing a strongly worded letter to the NAS or um, or uh, or this year it was ambitious about autism. One, ones that sort of try and co-opt autistic pride for our own for their own own purposes. Um, and uh, in this this year, it's collectively organised organised events. Um, uh, but there's no, there's no, there's no real hierarchy to it, uh, which is quite, quite. Good. There's no, there's no sort of centralised authority trying to direct things, uh, which is, is quite, you know, sorts of people spontaneously coming together, which I quite, I quite like. Um, every pride movement is different, and every autistic pride event is different. And what works for uh, many autistic people could be uh, to what works for other groups. Um, it's, uh, it's quite. I feel it's quite a common trait of many autistic people to not to conform socially. So I feel that any movement that accurately, re accurately reflects the autistic community needs to reflect the individuality of each autistic person. Uh, many of us struggled, struggled to travel long distances and many of us struggle with socialising, with crowds, with sounds and noises. Uh, so this could be, I think, possibly an argument against having something as large as the uh, LGBT uh, pride, let's say having you know having like a group of like thirty thousand people in a parade, that 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 could work work for, for that that community, probably not so much for our community, and uh, and uh, so it's so for these reasons, um, watching the movement grow over the last year, I think it's great how every single autistic pride event has a different character, uh, has a different flag, um. This is uh, the uh, this is the flag that I that I use for uh, the Autistic Pride in Hyde Park. It's got the rainbow infinity, um, the uh, lighting up gold star, and um, green is true to your nature, and purple is the colour for neurodiversity. Um, mm. Uh, has a different conception of what autistic pride is uh, and while most events are clustered around June the 18th some can be as early as April and others could be in early September uh, uh, as I've said before there's some no centralized authority that directs autistic pride and any attempts at gatekeeping are resisted over the years people have encouraged me to make the event bigger and more official but uh, although they're very large and formerly organised autistic pride events, and these events are very successful. My preference is for many small and self-organised autistic pride events in many towns and villages in the country as possible. Um, for individuals, autistic pride, I feel that autistic pride doesn't necessarily need to take the form of public events. 
The organiser of Inverness Autistic Pride, Kaby Brook, told me that she celebrated Autistic Pride Day by taking a walk with her family and enjoying herself, openly stimming or vocalising and expressing yourself in your own body language. Uh, I feel is an example of Autistic Pride in action. Standing up and passionately defending your own truth, regardless of convention or tone or social dynamics, even if it goes completely against the grain, or others, or if others consider it minor pedantic, is Autistic Pride in action. Seeking knowledge according to your own logic is Autistic Pride in action. Completely breaking social rules, if it doesn't cause harm, is Autistic Pride in action. Uh, demanding to be treated with the same respect and dignity as others is Autistic Pride in action. And walking away from something from some you can't handle is Autistic Pride in action. In a world which in many ways encourage autistic people to be ashamed of ourselves, and in a world where we suffer greatly in many ways, then being happy and content with who you are, even if it's fleeting, is the most radical thing you can do and the most challenging to the status quo. Um, another thing I like about the autistic pride movement is that everyone can get involved in it. Uh, not only does it try to be accessible to those who attend it, uh, if done right, it's also accessible to those who organise it. And this is why I prefer that there are many events up and down the country rather than a few large and centralised events. In my opinion, we need uh, an autistic pride in every small town and village, as this way it will reach far more people, both autistic and non-autistic, uh, and everyone who attends these events will play a role in shaping the character of the events. Um, I think uh, I saw... Uh, I think, as we all know, uh, the uh, corona crisis uh, has been extremely disruptive to our way of life. And it's changed many things in our lives. Uh, most physical autistic pride events have been cancelled or postponed. Um, there's some, some physical fitness in Ireland, but apart from that, it's 100% online this year. Um, I don't see any upside at all to the crisis. Uh, it may accelerate some positive social trends, such as working from home, automation, and may show the importance of jobs in society that deem those skilled. But on the other hand, the economic and social disruption caused by the virus will be even more harsh than the virus itself. And uh, the Tories will probably exacerbate the negative social effects of the virus. Um, for most of human history, autistic people have been isolated and scattered and lived out our whole lives not knowing who we are and not knowing there are other people like us. It's only been comparatively recently that autistic people have identified and even more recently, we've been gathering in large groups uh, like all communities, uh, we need to be resilient and adapt to the changes in the world. In future years, we'll be back outdoors on again, and I'm confident, hopefully, that future autistic pride will be a blend of offline, online and offline. So my message to you all is stay confident, stay resilient, stay together and stay proud of who you are. If anyone is organising an Autistic Pride event, uh, both online and offline in the future, um, please uh, feel free to ask, uh, ask questions uh, either on, on this uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube channel <laughs> or, uh, or, uh, or approach the Autistic Pride Alliance Facebook group. Um, uh, there may be another Autistic Pride picnic in Hyde Park this year, but it's not quite certain. Um, and uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, thank uh, all the participants of uh, of this event, uh, and an especially big thank you to Rachel and Ian Cotton uh, for doing all the technical uh, stuff. And um, uh, so late, later on, later on in this presentation, after after I finish my speech, uh, we'll have. We'll have, uh, we'll have a speech from Sarah McCulloch from the Autistic Empire. Um, and after that, we'll have poems from Natalie Joel. Um, then we'll have a message from Paul Wadey, uh, for the person who's involved in uh, and called the Guru Guru Aspies. He's, he's left, a, left a message. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, finally, from Charlie Fien, uh, which I, I think is is uh, this is quite quite a powerful message. And um, so uh, I've kind of come to the end of my speech, but uh, there's another seven minutes left. So um, if people wish to have any comments in the uh, comments questions in the um, in the uh, chat section, 
um, to type and uh, and uh, uh, please feel free to ask. Thank you very much. Uh, it's 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 quite. I think uh, I think I found um. I found that sort of often often sometimes um. Uh, when 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 people want to do an autistic pride event, often people sort of tend to overthink uh things and sort of make make it sort of big and big and elaborate. So. Uh, I think I'd recommend that people um, uh, that recommend if people want to uh, uh, if if people want to start then to try try starting small, small and and, and informal. Uh, so like you know probably so about you know five or six people. Uh, and I think it's it's um it's it's better it's best because of because like obviously. I mean, we don't like traveling everywhere like trying to it's, it's better to have like many events up and down the country i feel uh um uh like like you know in, in every single like town and village because if you just have one big event like in, in a city where everyone travels to then it doesn't reach as much people as having lots and lots of events up and down the country and i feel that sort of smaller events sort of are more sort of accessible that a good event would be accessible to someone who organizes it um as well as people who participate. So this is why I tend to prefer lots of small events. Um, uh, uh, so I think there's no other questions. So um, I guess it's coming up to 10.30. Um, to introduce Sarah McCulloch from the Autistic Empire. Um, we'll be speaking about uh, the, this uh, particular organization. Good morning, everyone, um, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Um, and welcome to our uh, world first of an online uh, Autistic Pride event. Um, thank you so much to the organisers for making this happen and uh, to Joseph for holding uh, this slot for London Autistic Pride. Um, I know that this has taken a lot of work and I really appreciate the effort that everyone has put in. Uh, so my name is Sarah McCulloch and I'm the founder of the Autistic Empire, which is an autistic social organisation built by and for autistic adults to form community based on autism as a civic identity and to produce tools and services for autistic people. Now, what is it that we mean by autism as a civic identity? As it stands, the keys of the kingdom of autism are currently held by psychiatrists. They define what it means to be autistic, who gets to be autistic and who doesn't, what is a legitimate autistic trait or experience and what isn't. They base the gatekeeping not on what we report to them, but on what they observe of us and what they feel is important. Of primary interest to psychiatrists is aspects of our lives that they consider to be defective. They then sort these defects into categories and add them to their book, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or if you are in Europe, the ICD-10, or International Statistical Classification of Disease and Related Health Problems, which frankly sounds even worse. Now, both you and I know that the autistic community is on average quite anxious, pretty depressed, and overwhelmingly suffers from low self-esteem. There are a number of reasons for that, but I would say that having to spend our lives as autistic people allowed to interact with the rest of the world only on inferior terms and conceptualised as neurotypical people gone wrong is quite a big one. I don't need to say too much about that because you're here at an autistic pride event and Joseph's just spoken about uh, creating a positive uh, view of autism. Uh, so you all know perfectly well what I'm talking about and you know that we need to do away with that as an approach. But what do we replace it with? This is what we started to ask ourselves at the Autistic Empire. If we throw out all of the medical terminology, if we sidestep the critical disability model, if we start again from a viewpoint that centers the autistic experience and removes neurotypical people out of the equation entirely, what does that look like? What does it mean to be autistic? What do we have in common with each other across the spectrum? If you stop looking at problems and start looking at commonalities, what do we find? So 
we've spent the last two years uh, looking at that and doing research um, and we've, we've come up with some interesting answers that I don't want to uh, detail here because I only have a few minutes um, but you can take a look on our website in your own time but the big conclusion that we've come to uh, when we stopped looking at problems and started looking at commonalities is this the autistic community is far larger than any professional acknowledges it's far bigger than those of us who are gathered here today it's far bigger than those of us who have a diagnosis. It's far bigger than those of us who are trying to seek a diagnosis or identifies as autistic. In fact, from the work that we've done, I am coming to the opinion that the majority of autistic people do not know that they are autistic, and they certainly have no idea that we, the autistic community, exist. So it's therefore our responsibility as people who have the privilege, is the privilege to identify as being autistic, to find out ways of reaching out to them and bringing them home. So as part of that, the question that I wanted to ask today is, who are we missing? What does it mean to build an autistic community that all of us can feel proud of? Who isn't here? Who should be part of our society and is not? These are very big questions, but given the global context in which we are celebrating today, I wanted to address one particular angle of that question, which is racism. I'm an occupational therapist and I work in a special school. Um, I was at a conference last year to discuss research um, into autism uh, and one of the researchers had recently completed a demographic survey of uh, the families of autistic children who are accessing services. She found that most, I don't want to say all, but a very significant number of service users were white and middle class, which makes sense, right? Only the most privileged in our society can make it through the government hoops that they put in our way in order to stop us having access to those services. But does that mean that black autistic people and autistic people from other ethnic groups simply do not exist? Of course not. What this tells us is that non-white, non-middle class autistic people have so many barriers in their way that they aren't even getting started on the path of realising their autistic identity so they can realise the support in the community that we all need. At the same conference, a deputy head spoke from a school which had a satellite. Sat forgive me. At the same conference, a deputy head spoke at a school which had a satellite campus in Bangladesh. She was saying that the greatest barrier that they've had in communicating with the parents of the children that they work with is that their first language, Sileti, doesn't have a word for autism. They have to say autism in English. There's just no conceptual framework uh, to work with. Now. There's very little that most of us here can do today about the lack of knowledge of autism in communities that are not our own, but here is the question that we can answer. When someone does manage to cross those barriers and they find themselves in our autistic community, what are we going to be able to offer them? What does it mean to build an autistic community that all of us can feel proud of? Who isn't here? Who should be part of our society and is not? The recent protests around Black Lives Matter following the murder of George Floyd has prompted some long overdue conversations around systemic, systemic racism and discrimination. But anti-racism is about more than knocking down slaver statues. Each of us has to look inside and say, what can I do to create an inclusive community and to dismantle exclusive structures? When we were first talking about what we wanted the empire to look like, it was not even a question to us that we would be anti-racist. We spent hours uh, testing the skin tone of the hands in our corporate logo to make sure that they could be read as the widest possible range of ethnicities. Uh, the answer is there's an apricot skin tone uh, that you can look up. Uh, we wrote into our branding policy that uh, that colour could be changed to something culturally appropriate for any um, regional or black and minority ethnic events, um, even though we've yet to hold one. Um, we tried to organise panel discussions for Black History Month. Um, and we've done everything we can in the uh, content that we put out uh, to make sure that this represents uh, as diverse a range of people as possible so that people can see themselves in what we do. But we have very limited resources and we need the solidarity of others to make this work. In the two years that we've been in existence as an organisation, we have tried over and over again to reach out to black groups, black autistic people and to talk to other autistic communities about black issues. We have been hindered by a lack of infrastructure and a lack of understanding of autistic people, 
of black narratives and the specific needs of black autistic people. We have had black citizens represent the empire at events where they were made to feel uncomfortable as the only white person present. We've had black people working with us victimized by microaggressions at autistic events. It has been very frustrating. We can't just wait for people to come to us and say what they need, because maybe like Siletti, they just don't have the words to tell us. Maybe the people who are not here don't know what we do. Maybe, as my friend and colleague Odai, um, who spoke at London Autistic Pride last year, uh, maybe if they show up, they feel very uncomfortable about not seeing anyone else like them there. Is Odai really the only black autistic person in all of London? What have we missed? We all have the privilege of knowing that we are autistic and of being able to turn out for a great event like Autistic Pride. And we have to use that privilege that we have to benefit others, to build our community and to support each other as autistic people. So I want to ask everyone listening today, both today and on playback, what are you going to do in the next year to make, aut to make Autistic Pride a time to be proud for every autistic person? Who are you going to tell? How are you going to tell them? And where are you going to tell them to go? Coronavirus has forced us online this year, which has given us a real uh, opportunity to uh, give access to these events to people who uh, might not otherwise be able to attend a physical one. But if you're poor, you're so much less likely to have good internet access. If you live in a small town, as Joseph was saying earlier, um, you might not be able to travel into an event. Clearly, we need to have more events in more local areas. If you're relying on existing autistic organisations to spread the word, what about all of the autistic people who don't belong to them? What does it mean to build an autistic community that all of us can feel proud of? Who isn't here? Who should be part of our society and is not? And what are we going to do about it? Have a great Pride, everyone, and thank you very much for listening. Thanks so much, Ian, and thank you, Joseph, for um, your wonderful organising and for having me here today. I have two poems to share. Let me just share my screen with you all. Come as you are. No sweet aspersions shall the heavens let fall. Melting it down and zoming out, diversely or savagely unmanning the mannerly with my unruly speech, raising my rip, raise, micro, soft hand, raising it and putting it down. In Piccadilly Circus to my fiery juggler, they're guarding their jugglers, and do I oppress to liberate this? So oppress this eye, limiting what I express, sit for a minute, selective, muting in the encrypteric, closing down, not coming out, cancelling my noise and zoning out in Monty Python's flying circus, not the right room for as argument from too many screens to Alexa theme, losing the language of my dreams, or break my heart for I cannot hold my tongue and my tongue cannot hold my heart in this room. Our Greta Thumb, this world is not ready for some of us yet. Oh, let aspersion sweet heaven shall fall. ASP or Autistic Spectrum Pleasures. May I love the textures, may I love the patterns, may I love the vibrations, may I speak my mind, may I be heard in kind, may I not need to communicate, may I have time alone, may I turn off my phone, may I have the key to the quiet room, please, may I turn the lights down, may I sit down, may I have this seat, may I have more time to eat, may I have something spicy may i be safe to play may i per throw my personal alarm away may i change this world may i rock your world may i stim with your head may i interrupt your clock may i taste your may i hyper focus on this 
specific. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sarah and Natalie, for the talks. Um, the uh, Next, we're going to do a uh, couple of pre-recorded videos. Uh, first one is from Paul Wadey, who, uh, who, who I've known for several, uh, many, many years and, and has uh, taken part in, in many Autistic Pride events. Um, as a uh, as a um, uh, message uh, message for everyone attending Autistic Pride, which uh, which is very Buddhist. Um, uh, it's a very, very interesting uh, point he makes. And then after that, it will be uh, it will be uh, from Charlotte uh, Charlotte Fien, um, uh, who's who's an activist uh, who's autistic and has Down syndrome as well. And um, uh, I, I like I like that she has uh, attended as well because um, it's interesting hearing perspectives from from the community of, of people with uh, people with Down syndrome um, because uh, uh, they face sort of similar barriers to you know, how autistic people do as well. Um, sort of being being casually dehumanised and having 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 parents talk over talk over them. And uh, but in some ways it's similar. In some ways it's even more intense. So it's it's uh, it's not nice to see nice to see the varying perspectives in that. Uh, so uh, very 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 glad to have these people. So. Uh, Hello, my name is Paul Wadey and I'm an autistic advocate and activist and I run around the country and the world doing shows and training and wrote a book and make things you can wear. And there's my wife in the background stimming if you just about heard her. I'd like to wish you all a happy Autism Pride 2020. Make the best of it you can. Share yourself with other autistics. You're not alone. Please find ways to make being autistic work for you. And if you don't think you can do that, just find other autistics and share your lives with us. Carry on. Carry on. And don't be low. Carry on. And don't be alone. And if you can, like me, be proud of who and what you are, not because of what you can do or whatever abilities you've got, but because that's how you were made and it's perfectly natural for you. And in the right conditions, you're fine. You don't have to walk around being intensely happy about life all the time or achieving a great deal. Actually, you don't. Nor do you have to walk around being miserable and unhappy. You can be quite neutral. You can just be present every day and be you and it's fine. It's okay. So happy. Autism Pride 2020 and keep going. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Charlotte Tennant-Fien. This is my second Autism Pride and I'm chuffed to be doing it again. Being diagnosed with both Down syndrome and autism has meant that most of my teachers and schools expected very little from me. Having a double diagnosis equals very low expectations. I was expected to never speak. I find that, as I've spoken at the UN twice, I was expected to never master basic maths. I've mastered advanced algebra and twig. The more I was told, I couldn't or wouldn't. I told myself I could and I would. I guess I'm really stubborn that way. If someone insists I can't, I will try a billion times harder to prove them wrong. I was also told I would never be independent. Well, that's really a laugh because I've traveled abroad on my own. I have worked in Northampton as a golf coach. I worked as an intern in New York City last summer. So I guess that's pretty much bollocks as well. But when you have both Down syndrome and, and autism, expectations are very low. 
people's expectations are usually based on information that is outdated or just plain wrong. So don't allow other people's bias or, or ignorance to determine what you can achieve or what your worth is to society. We all have a value. It's not because of what we do, what job we have, how much money we earn. It's more to do with what's in our hearts, how much we care about others, the, the good we bring to the world. So what is the truth about, about having Down syndrome or autism? or having both as I do. We are all human beings. If society is really serious about diversity, then people with, with autism and Down syndrome should be part of that diversity. Otherwise, it's just hypocrisy. This is one of my favorite quotes from Malcolm X, and it's fitting because our community is also fighting to be accepted, valued and respected. We declare our right on this earth to be a human being, to be respected as a human being, to be given the rights of a human, of a human being in this society, on this earth, in this day, which we intend to bring into assistance by any means necessary. Okie dokie. So that, that, that comes to the um that comes to the end of uh, the um the London Autistic Pride uh, slot. Um thank you uh, very much to uh, Paul and Charlie and Sarah and Natalie uh, for, for taking part in this and uh, Thank you again to everybody who's participating in uh, in in this uh, event, both organising and watching. And also a big thank you to Rachel and Ian Cotton for um, sort of building uh, the infrastructure of this uh, of this group. Um, if uh, anyone has any questions in the uh, subsequent ten minutes, um, Paul and Sarah and me. Uh, are around uh, to answer questions. So if anybody has any, any further questions to ask, um, uh, please do so. I know Natalie dropped off, but somebody did ask for a link to her poems. So is it possible to publish that later somewhere? Uh, yes, yes, uh, I can certainly put that. Um, uh, I, can, I can ask uh, to put the text up on the uh, on the Autistic Pride Alliance uh, Facebook group, uh, Facebook page, uh, if, if she's okay with that. Um, uh, or so, um, any questions? I'm trying to look around. No, they're not. So, um, okay. Um, so yeah uh i have to repeat my thank yous to everybody and i think we could have a 10 minute break <laughs>